Ready? You have the cameras rolling? Now, he's supposed to look like Donald Trump, but he's actually much too good looking. You are really handsome. You thought it will be a simple cosplay playthrough, didn't you? Mr. Trump, how should we handle this run? I have very powerful hands. <laughs> Aren't they beautiful? I have very powerful hands and large hands, relatively large hands. That guy's got a serious weight problem. Go home, start exercising. So basically it's a fat roll cestus only run, I have seen Dante and Bushy make similar videos, so the approach I took was to combine two limiters, and to do all bosses to get the most pain fun out of it. I start by adding the fists to my inventory and a big hammer to make me heavy roll. A legendary battle, up to the surface, I never liked this guy. So we'll kill him right away, or yeah, later sounds good too. We meet Melina, unlocking the torrent, and now we need to go prepare ourselves. We will go and collect across Kalid and Limgrove some seeds and tears. Also a couple useful items for later such as upgrade stones, the medallion halves, and the radigan seal. The rest of the map is also technically possible for us to reach, but I'll try to hold myself back from overpowering, so we won't go there yet. Also we can face a couple small bosses on the way to level up a bit. After going far enough into Kalid, we can teleport to the round table, unlocking the blacksmith, and can upgrade the weapons to their limit. Now it's time to face Margit. So on the first fight I had against him, I got my butt kicked, I had no damage, no health, and even my flask was barely usable. Now however he felt much more like a warm up before the real bosses. The strategy. We punch. The main thing that I had to get used to was the distance that we could roll to, making attacks that were easy to dodge with normal rolls, problematic with the heavy ones. Nine tries were a promising start. Also, defeating Margit gives me access to Godric's castle, where the much needed iron wet blade is. Basically, it allows me to upgrade my Cestus's strength scaling, making it hit much harder with each level I put in strength. A light, Godric next. I command the I'm the lord of all that is golden. I will probably keep my talismans the same through the whole run, so I will go over them once and unless there will be a major change in them, I won't mention them again. For the full 4 talisman slots my plan were the seal of Radigan, which just boosts many stats with barely any price to pay. A great way to boost yourself all around. Next it was the green turtle talisman. Being heavy means consuming more stamina, so I really need to regenerate it as fast as possible. To boost my damage, I will mostly use the axe or the claw talismans, depending on what type of attack I will be using. And lastly, Merica's favor, which boosts your stamina and health without any drawback. Okay, back to Godric. Wow, that went even smoother. I wonder if Trump is really is the strongest. Godric's double stomp attack was a great way for me to dodge easily by jumping and also getting free hits in. I also noticed the first of the tactics we're going to abuse this run, and this one is the jump attack. So much damage and we get to at least start the attack from some distance. A light back to Gridning Mats. On our way we will also prepare the Phy6 flask and upgrade the fists a bit more. I will also unlock Godric's room, because it's the most useful one out of all the others, at least for this run. Granted, we will barely notice it since it needs the rune art to work, which is extremely limited. I think we are ready enough time to grab the second rune that we need for the capital. We have three options, but Radhan never was a fight that I really liked or was good at, and Rikert is impossible right now, for reasons, so Rinella it is. Or so I thought, but our dog wasn't so happy with us. Here Trump faced his first real wall. As much as he sounds easy on paper, the problem with Radigan's wolf are all his super strong and fast attacks and projectiles. Normally it's not a problem. However with this run, rolling efficiently is not a thing. So we'll have to do with what we have. So far the biggest problem in the run with 17 deaths, not too bad. 
As for the queen herself yeah she was a joke. Her first phase wasn't any problem, as the kids barely do anything, and once she falls down, she just lets you damage her as much as you want, and in the second phase the jump attack micro stunned her, breaking most of her spells. And when she used summons, I just lured them away and ran towards her, as she tends to be passive while the summons are alive. Out of all her summons, I would say the dragon is the best since he doesn't move at all after his fire breath attack. I almost got her on the second try, but her summon managed to catch me just in time before the final blow. Time for the capital. Now standing between me and the capital was the draconic tree sentinel, like the normal tree sentinel, but if it was garbage, the first try with the him actually went well, but after a couple more tries, I decided to call quits and prepare some more. Among the things that I did was coming back for a sweet revenge against the white mask and bullied the normal tree sentinel to feel better with myself. So much for preparing it is. And I changed my armor set for the royal remains one. I got it a bit earlier, but just no remembered to use it. Alright, I'm ready. Show him who's the boss, Mr. Trump. The biggest concern for me was his damage. Any attack would wipe off more than half of my health bar, meaning I had to heal after every such attack. Yet he loved to spam two attacks at once making my death certain. And on top of that, most of his attacks did area damage, meaning even if you dodged his cub, you would still get hit by the shockwave. But after some time I figured out that by sticking to his left side, he would almost always use only his shield, which was much weaker, and with no area damage. Somehow, we did it, but after seeing this, I started losing the confidence I had until now. Time for the golden chad, I don't expect too many problems with him. This is only the easy part of the real fight, and I'm pretty sure in my abilities fighting him, and he's dead. His moves were extremely fair and easy to dodge from even in heavy form, and his frequent stomp made a great opening for a jump attack. Morgat next. Back to to the drawing board it is. I finally got my planned armor for the run, while it might not be the best armor in the game. I killed Patches so one armor is off list, and, well it suits him, doesn't it? Anyway ignore Mo and pick up the talismans. Next we grabbed a bunk of crystal tears, killing some trees on the way. They were mostly a copy of the stray demon, so it wasn't a problem to deal with. Hitting it was a bit tricky, since the front for some reason, didn't want to register my hits. So the only option was to attack from the side. After collecting the tears and the smithing stones I wanted, oh, Emma stop you right here sir. I went to do some side quests to get me access the optional remembrance bosses. I'm a very stable genius. I see. And to continue Rani's quest, we must face Ratin. I decided to challenge Trump a bit more to add extra sparkle to it. No horse in this fight, which creates a problem with just two of his attacks. First being his space launch, and the second is his phase 2 meteor slam. So I went and picked the almost perfect shield tier, and tried it on the comet first, leaving me exposed to the four meteors. Soon enough I learned how to dodge without the horse the comet, and was ready to protect myself from the one shot. It worked, only for me to realize he follows it with another attack that's hard to dodge, and died on the last hit. In the end he didn't even get to use the meteor attack before I struck him down. Radhan's death opens up the path to the rest of Rani's quest, and on the way slaughter a big deer, which means one less remembrance to go. After progressing Rani's quest, I felt confident enough to go back to the main track, Morgat. by King Morgoth. Last of all kings. Not too much to say about this one. It went very straightforward. I got a bit scared after barely managing to put one hit into him before dying on the first try. But on the second I almost got him. The main issue with him was his wombo combo that he tends to unleash sometimes that goes for ages. Usually bosses make some kind of a sign before they start something of this kind. Well, not Morgat. Luckily the spear throw proved to be an excellent opportunity to deal some good damage. Morgat down and into the snow we go. <laughs> Mandatory Shabriri kill, and then we retrieve the Medusa to her friend. Oh, are you asking why are we doing this? That's why. 
Then we continue the Rani quest, pick Tiny Rani and beat the blade. For this fight I decided to limit myself to only charge attacks instead of jumping. Our new wife is praising us. What did I think about when I went to the 42k health fire giant with a plus 18 fists? No idea but I got fk would We'll be back later. On my first run the gargoyles were the absolute worst for me. I don't know if I went here way too early back then or something else. But those guys beated me dozens of times until the point they were the only boss I used a summon on. But this time 6 times was all they got from me. The most shameful part of the run, 7 tries, 7 frickin' tries, these clowns lasted longer than some end game bosses, ugh let me do it for you. least I got to use the stomp a bit. And Donald got a hug. He needed that. I'm a very stable genius. And of course Estelle went down in half the tries. In this fight, the only thing I had to watch for was his super grab he does rarely. And even then you would have enough time to heal over this attack. Oh and I discovered you can't hide under him during the meteor shower. Because he doesn't care. He will shoot them at himself if needed. I really don't want to do it, but seeing from the options I have left as to where to go now, it's time for a revenge against the orange giant. The first phase went almost always smoothly, with Trump just slamming his leg and avoiding all attacks. The real problem was in the second phase. His weak spot changed from the leg to the hands, and it was horrible. He always moved them away, and I barely had any time to put damage in and the camera helped him by always showing his torso, while I tried to aim for the hand, so instead I had Trump charge attack the foot over, over and over again, after upgrading my fists a bit more, somehow that worked and after 7 long minutes boxing his foot, I won. I'm glad to see you're doing good sir. Up to the crumbling Azula we go, or so I would want to say, but before that. A quick stop in Vulcan Manor. The fat white dude has easily beaten the Godskin Noble, and we went to face Riker. Somehow it was doable to defeat the 30k health serpent which was surprising. The snake barely moved at all, didn't have a single attack for the close range, and so the only damage I took was from the lava. But it cost me all my flasks, and Riker cooked our asses, so we leave for now. Instead we went back to the snow to move towards the one and only, deep in the roots. Niall was quite a pain in the ass, thanks to his warriors. It took me some time to decide how to approach them, and in the end, Trump rushed to kill the dual sword guy before he could do anything, take down somehow the shield guy, and then 1v1 versus Niall. Worth noting Niall's leg storm slam that normally you would just roll out of, but not this time. And after 32 attempts, Niall was down, and we were one step closer to the one who shall be not named. Side note, I wish a very happy day to whoever put that one teleporting knight right before the elevator to Nile. Back to the side quests, I took my frustration after Nile on his weak self and Kalid, then finished farming my flask to 14 shots, plus 12 and max my fists, jumping to the Hallig tree. I always wonder why did the developers put Loretta in such an endgame place, while having such a low health bar, and anyway being a fairly weak boss. Perhaps it was to lure us into a false sense of security before the one waiting at the roots. Anyway, Loretta was down after barely a couple tries, and the way to the roots was open. So it's time to get the hell out of here. Next on the list was Fortisax, and sure enough in a few tries he was down as well. Not much to comment here about the fight itself. The music was great though, and the sky looked awesome. Furitsax himself was a bit too flashy in my opinion with all the lighting, death clouds fire and whatnot, making it hard to follow his attacks, but that's okay. Also if you didn't notice, he's an ancient dragon Lanciax reskin with a bit of extra moves tossed in. One of our wives died, but at least we got the rune. Speaking of dead wives. And turns out she sent us to Ohio. And oh boy, do I hate Ohio. Why, are you asking? What could be worse than a Godskin Noble? Oh, I know. Godskin Duo.
That's why. So far the worst boss I faced was the Dragon Tree Sentinel, which was 57 fights. Well, it was nothing compared to them, generally they are a mess to fight, but with sleep pots they are quickly downed easily, so I decided to not do that. Instead I spent the next day figuring out what to do with them. I tried to avoid them and do one after one, starting from the Apostle, and one that went nowhere, the Noble first. That wasn't quick enough for them to stay 1v1. So I tried to lower one's health to barely before break, kill the second one, and then go back to finish quickly, the first before he resurrects. But that failed too. It was a hell of many hours, trying again and again and again, suffering each minute, giving a true Ohio experience, not to mention both of them had an almost guaranteed one-shot attack in their face too. Getting caught in the noble's role was a death no matter what, and the apostle's flame spin wasn't all that bad while preparing but it gave me just enough micro stuns to make sure I wouldn't be able to leave the hit area fast enough with the burst itself finishing me, trying to prepare myself a bit better. I took a quick detour and picked up the Great Shield Talisman, getting a 20% defense up. The result was me just killing the Apostle four times in a row, while mostly ignoring the Noble. I wasn't planning on having him phase two straight and rolling around the arena, giving me instant death. He did it anyway. I used all my seven faith to pray for him not to bug and go through the column, and my prayers worked. In the end, after 106 painful tries, the guys in the white coats were down. The way to Placidus Axe and Malekith was open. I'm a very stable genius. I was glad to discover neither of them put too much of a challenge. Placidus Axe had such a giant and unmovable body. Trump just charged heavy attacks on him and broke his poise a bunch of times. He often tried to fire right in front of himself, allowing me to close on him and punch, as long as that attack was going. His double mitter laser was annoying, but with enough luck he did it right near me giving me enough time to run to the safe zone near him. The teleportation was also a problem, which I solved by just running away as soon as I saw the particles starting to form into him, and after 10 attempts, the Dragon Lord was down. Malekith was even nicer, dying even faster than the Dragon Lord. As much as I saw everyone praising him to be one of the hardest ones in the game, I never really had problem with him. He had an extremely painful attacks, each easily deleting between a third to a half of your health at both phases. Not to mention his second phase had a special effect, biting at your health and limiting its maximum temporarily each time he would hit you. His second phase was indeed a hell to dodge, but considering his small health bar at that phase, it wasn't much of a problem. Like third phase sister Freyad wouldn't be so hard if she had half the health. He took me down with him, but by just barely a second or two. The kill was registered, and the Elden Chad was awaiting, or so I would think. Gideon was a hot mess, spamming his stupid magic without a single breather in between. I would put in Malekith and Radigan's wolf in the same team. The glass cannons, all of them had stupidly high damage, easily nuking a health bar of any length, but also dying in a mere few attacks. So, those kinds of fights weren't that horrible to attempt again and again, unlike the Godskin duel, where each attempt cost about 5 to 6 minutes of my life. But now Gideon is all dead, and we can meet the Stan user. The first Elden Lord. We have fought him earlier, and this time too it wasn't much of a big deal. His attacks are so clear and easy to understand. Some bosses like to use attacks that you have no idea how to handle, but each of Godfrey's axe swings are well-timed and have an obvious escape route from them, but then he transforms. I made it sound like it became a challenge on the second phase, but not really. His attacks are still well telegraphed, and he mainly attacks forward, so as long as you stick to his side and dodge whenever he faces you, there isn't much he can do except use his roar to send you flying away, but even then it doesn't do any damage. Just make sure to dodge the grab right after the roar, and you'll be fine. He actually froze for some reason on my second attempt, and let me spam him all I want. It could have been an easy kill, but I thought it wouldn't be any fun, and let him yoink me into the ground on his second phase. So, technically speaking it was two attempts. Now I can't level anymore until Trump will beat the Elden Beast. But before that, we will go for the rest of the remembrances. First on the list is my favorite boss. Welcome, honored guest, to the birthplace 
of our dynasty. His music is awesome, the move set is fun to follow, and lore story wise I like the whole pure evil type. Without some good side to him, he doesn't try to explain himself prove that he is right over others, he just does his thing, really chill guy. His first stage is fairly easy, but then comes the kneel part, we did get the purifying crystal tier against it, so we will be using that. Sadly, I can't say I'm a big fan of this phase, his attacks are as usual fun to follow, but him covering most of the ground with blood flames that destroy Trump's health bar is a problem for me, because instead of focusing on him, I have to watch where the hell am I walking. And unlike most bosses with a second phase, instead of replacing his moveset with a new one, he uses the same old moves, just with an extra spice to them, so where one attack would end, now there is a follow-up for it causing you to relearn everything you mastered in the first phase. There was plenty of struggle with him, but after a while the best boss was down as well, counting about two dozens death. Our only options left are Rikard, Radigan and her, so I decided to finally face Rikard. Unlike the rest of the bosses there wasn't an issue of him being hard to beat, but rather hard to solve how to even fight him, besides the obvious huge health pool there was an entire other issue making him much more of a problem than the other gimmick fights in the Souls series, such as Eherm and the Storm King. The giant lava pool would bite at our health constantly, and as I knew the fight would last for long, we needed to do something about it. So I found this video of Bushy beating the game under Scarlet Rot and borrowed an idea from there. With this build we could possibly outheal the lava damage and give us a chance against Rikard. The alteration that I made to the build was discarding the armor, since it works only under 18% health which I would prefer to avoid. Instead I went to pick a talisman that would help me. The Godskin Swaddling Cloth. It would heal me with a decent amount after a series of hits that I deal. So I went to gather all the items. None of them were much of an issue so far. Now, just the cloth left. And it is in oh, oh. After the hell that was Godskin Duel. Fighting them one by one was a joke, and as you can guess, I died. And of course it was for the big guy roll. Two attempts it is. Now, I'm not sure if the shield will actually work while we two hand the fists, but I decided to go with it anyway. With the new build, the snake phase didn't even put a scratch to our health, and I hoped that so would Rikard. Well, I was wrong. Not only the health bar was doubled, the enemy sprite changed, somehow making the hitbox questionable at best, because we just couldn't reach him. Large hands, relatively large hands. Not to mention Rikard was using frequently the Skull's Rain, making us leave him and just run around the area to avoid them, and his sword swings that would one-shot us almost always. So I decided to finally unleash my secret weapon that I was holding on using up until now, the spiked Kiestus. And sure enough, one try was all it took to kill Rikard with it. In total Rikard took five tries. And back to the normal Cestus it is. Originally I planned to leave Radigan as the last boss, but I knew she would beat my ass and decided to keep her for another day. Radigan was extremely fast, but he often took breaks after his attacks, giving me enough time to use charge attacks. His worst attack was the teleport with the blast wave, which I couldn't roll out of. The Elden Beast, on the other hand, being such a chunky boy, was flying away to the oversight of the map the whole time, so back to jump attacks it is. I hate the Elden Beast part with passion. Radigan was such a fun fight. And now I just had to chase a big chunky dragon thing for 5 minutes as a last boss. Anyway, the fight wasn't a pushover, but while making consistent progress, soon enough both of them were down, and I left Marika's body without putting a rune in it yet. So now, without any other option left, it was time to Melenia. I quit the run for the day, not before marrying Rani on first try, and started fighting Melenia the next morning. I am Melenia. Blade of Mikola. And I have never known defeat. I knew this fight would possibly end up the biggest problem in this run, but decided to stay optimistic. It didn't help at all, and after a few dozens tries over and over, it was time to make big changes. First of all, I decided to level up as I was now after the main game, and could get up to 130, putting everything in strength and vigor. After 45 attempts, I decided to finally wear a helmet, 
It never was a rule, but I tend to never use one in Souls games, but this time was different, that didn't help either. Later, at the 55 death mark I decided to get rid of Fia's blessing, getting a few more percent into my health bar, and sure enough, at the 60th attempt I finally did it. I reached phase 2, but my health bar was non-existent at this point, and I died right away. So far my biggest issues were the waterfall dance and the nuke at the start of phase 2. I couldn't roll out of the nuke with the heavy roll, but easily enough you can just run past her and keep running, dodging it completely most of the times. But the waterfall dance was hell. Melenia did 4 instances of attacks during the waterfall dance. The second and the third were simple enough, as you can just roll towards her on the second and run to the right to dodge the third. But the first one was absolute hell, nothing worked against it, and after trying to find a way to dodge it on YouTube, I discovered nothing works with heavy roll, at least it didn't for me. The attack was easy to dodge while far away when she starts it, but considering I'm constantly glued to her, that wasn't a thing so I just had to pray she would not use it too much. I think that in all of my attempts I only managed to perfectly dodge it once. She often did it around 70% and 30% health, so I just ran away when she reached those points and baited her to do it. And then, it happened. After around 75 attempts, I made a discovery. You could do a heavy attack while jumping. Yeah, you could have expect a man who was doing this run for well over 30 hours by now to know about this thing, but nope, I didn't. This huge discovery meant I could do now more damage than before, and on top of that build poise to make Melenia stun. At around that time I also decided to use the spiked Cestus like a casual, now allowing me to finish the first phase Melenia rather quickly. Melenia, as many other bosses and enemies in general, suffered a lot from bleed weapons biting away at her health for each bleed proc, so to not make my life too easy, I prevented myself from using it the whole game, except for her and Rikard. The last addition to my kit, after 110 deaths, was the Ash of War, Determination. It was the first time of me using that Ash of War, and about the second or third time using Ashes of War at all. From my memory the only other one was the FIA Champions, but I could forget someone. With my kit complete and ready, it took me another 23 tries, and then I finally got her. Toddling in 133 deaths Melenia was down, making her take the number one spot of the hardest boss on this run from the Godskin duel. Don't worry though, they still won the worst boss award. With Melenia down, it was over, my suffering was over, and I finally could be free. But before we finish, I had to revisit my favorite boss once again. We teleported back to Mo in the sores, and interestingly, he's still there. So I guess he's just an illusion, created probably by Morgat. Lastly, so whose ending will we be choosing, Mr. Trump? So that will do for this video guys, I hope you enjoyed it, and would really love to receive any kind of feedback, as it is my first ever challenge run on Elden Ring, and a video on YouTube too. Now I originally planned to voice over the whole script myself, but I discovered my mic is garbage. I would love to use my voice instead of AI, so possibly if the videos will do good and you'll like them, I'll buy one to record myself. So yeah anyway, thank you all and see you later, feel free to suggest any interesting runs ideas in the comments. I might do them, but right now I have a good idea of what's next.